Okay, guys, uh, in this platform, let us try to consider our question paper, which is uh, the appeal 2024 exam working with the differentiation. We are given our question number one, uh, that is 1.1 given z is equal to, that is sine xy. So we're asked to prove that this is equal to x minus y, the cos of xy. Okay, let's consider uh, the function that we are given there and try to make sense of what we are given. That is, uh, z is equivalent to the sine of xy. All right, so that is, we have to consider two terms, the x and y at the same time. And what we need is to determine or to prove that if you are to find the derivative of z with respect to y, minus we are given two things there minus the derivative of the same z with respect to x we must obtain x minus y the cos of xy all right so let's see what we are supposed to answer this how are you supposed to answer this question given the z in terms of x and y we do understand that we can find the derivative of each as we consider one to be a constant. So by determining the derivative of z with respect to x, it follows that at that moment, y is considered as a constant, considered as any number that you can think of, just like we've got two sine x, or maybe it's three sine x. How do you differentiate if there is a number here, which is two? You take the two there, the derivative of two x, which is two, then this changes to a cos, and it's gonna be two x. So it is the same thing, but this is why instead of in place of these two, we're just going to have our y as we had uh, before. So meaning to say that is going to be y, the cos of x, y. All right. So make sure that you just go through uh, the introduction part where we talked about this. You consider the constant. Uh, the other part is a constant. I mean, so also if you are to determine the derivative of z with respect to x at that uh, with respect to y this time, we are going to have our x as a constant. So just like what we saw on the y, it's going to be x, then it changes to a cos. So that will be cos xy. All right, so this is what we have. On our question, we are just given the subtraction, guys. That, that, is, that is what we have there. We're just given that these two are, are supposed to be subtracted. The derivative of z with respect to x and that of z with respect to y. So we're just going to subtract. The one of z with respect to with respect to y minus that of z with respect to x. We want to see what are we going to have? So this is of z with respect to y, which is x, uh, the cos of x y, and that of z with respect to x that is uh, y, the cos of x y. So by considering this, we can just say there's a common term. Uh, to be considered, which is the cos of x, y, also the cos of x, y here. So we can factor out uh, the cos of x, y. So if you factor out this, what are you going to remain with? And this term, you're going to remain with x. And this part, we are going to remain with y. So that is the cos of x, y. We factored out this cos x, y from what? From what we had. So that is exactly what we were supposed to prove from the given Question, all right, given uh, z in terms of x and y from the sign, you can find the derivative of each, considering that one is a constant at that moment. One is to be considered as a constant at that moment. Then we are also given on 1.2, that is, okay, something to consider on our parametric then. We are given that y is equal to a the sine of theta minus a theta cos theta. Then also we are given, uh, and another part here we are supposed to consider is of x, x which is equal to a cos theta plus a theta sine theta. All right, so just something to consider there. Okay, no problem. 1.21. We need to determine the derivative with respect to y, the derivative of x of y with respect to x, I mean. So the derivative of y with respect to x, we do understand that there are so many formulas that you can use, and I talked about this formula. The derivative of y with respect to theta over that of x. 
with respect to theta if you use this formula you are going to have your dy dx or you can use the dy dx is equal to uh dy d theta times you're going to multiply to d theta dx as long these two are the same they'll cancel and you remain with dy dx so you can use this formula it's up to you so as for me guys i'm just going to use the direct formula that you're given to divide like this because i just need the derivative of y with respect to theta and also that of x with respect to theta so as we saw that we are going to need this formula i'm um, just going to differentiate each and every part here all right let's start with y with respect to theta the derivative of y with respect to theta this is a sine theta remember sine changes to a cos so it's going to be a cos theta uh, if we consider this part we can see that there we have got a product that's a product that we are given there so remember from the product we're going to consider one to be our u and the other part to be our v so if you consider this case you are having u and v at the same time so meaning to say the derivative we're going to have u first derivative of v plus v the first derivative of u all right so that is gonna there's a minus already that is there so you have to consider the minus that you're given then let's find uh the derivative of this that's a product so we have u which is a cos uh this a theta so that was gonna be a theta times the derivative of v which is the cos remember cos changes to a negative sign so that will be negative sine theta all right plus v which is our v is the cos of theta so that's cos theta times the derivative of u which is a cos theta from the a uh, from the a theta with respect to theta this is just like a linear so you're just going to take the coefficient of theta which is a it's just like you're differentiating with respect to x and you're given a x we're just going to take a which is the coefficient there all right so let's consider our simplification thereafter what are we going to have so this is a cos theta uh you're going to multiply negative to a negative there that's a positive a theta cos uh, a theta sine theta so it's going to be a theta uh sine theta like this then you multiply the negative to a positive so that is going to be a negative so that's negative a the cos of theta so by just looking here we can see that these two are common and they can cancel out the a a, a cos theta so that's that means we're going to have the derivative of y with respect to theta as this term which is a theta sine of theta all right let's just leave it like that let's just leave it like that let's move on to the part of uh, x and do the same so that's the condition guys we just have to be very careful so as you can see it's also the same thing as what we had here we just differentiated cos which changes to a negative sign so that will be negative a sine of theta again the product there just like the previous case but this time it's under an addition so addition you can just write as it is yes you can write a plus here but the plus does not affect anything all right so you're going to have u which is a theta times the first derivative of what of the v which is our sine theta <clears throat> this will give us the cost sorry for that so that will be uh the cos of theta here all right so then we need plus so that will be plus v our v that is the sine of theta as it is then you differentiate u which is a theta just like what we saw on cos that gave us what that gave us a so meaning to say this is simply times what times a all right so like i was saying the effect of a positive actually we do not see the effect of a positive because positive times anything just gonna remain as it is so that's yeah it's just gonna be a theta cos theta then positive positive that will be positive a sine theta all right so at the end we can see that we've got common terms minus a sine theta and a sine theta these two can cancel then you've got a theta cos theta so we've got the derivative of x with respect to to theta and from this other hand we had the derivative of y with respect to to theta so that's the concept you are going to need the derivative of each so that we can determine the derivative of y with respect to x from the formula 
that I wrote dy over the theta over the derivative of x with respect to theta. So we can just substitute uh, what we are given in this case, what we calculated, that derivative of y with respect to theta. We have it, that derivative of y with respect to theta, that is a theta sine theta. Everything over that derivative of x with respect to theta, which gave us a theta cos theta like this. All right, so this can be simplified further. We can simplify uh, further this simplification that we have. All right, so the a, the a cancels theta, theta. Remember from your trigonometry, sine over cos, that's a tan. So that was going to be a tan theta in the simplest form. So it means wherever we are seeing dy dx, we are going to take it as what? The tan of theta. That is the tan of theta in simplest form. All right, let's move on quickly to another part and see what we are given. So I'm just going to find, sorry for that. I need this patent. I don't know, guys, you see this software is so anyways, let's see what we got here. I'm just going to need one or two from what we calculated. Anyways, okay, I'm just going to remove this. Let's see our question. This one is just a continuation. Finding the second derivative of y with respect to x from this, we can consider also the formula that we are given. Remember from our formula sheet, we are given d the theta uh, of dy dx times d theta dx. So it must be a times d theta dx. We are also given this from your formula sheet. So if you consider this, it simply means the derivative with respect to theta of this part that we got, the derivative with respect of this dy dx, the derivative with respect to theta of dy dx, which we got in this case. Sorry, I'm just going to refer back. Need to remove this. All right. So just going to refer to them. Dy dx. Remember, we calculated this and it gave us what? A tan of theta. So in place of this dy dx, we're going to write a tan of theta times d theta dx. So this, this is not dx, d theta. It's d theta dx. There, what are we having? We are having dx, d theta from those calculations that we made, remember, from that. Uh, product rule. So this is same as over one so that we can make d theta over dx the subject. So it will be one over this also. That is one over a theta cos theta. So it means wherever we are seeing a d theta dx is the reciprocal of dx d theta that we had. So it's one over a theta cos theta like this. All right. So I think we saw from where we took this one from all right, let's inter uh, let's differentiate here. If we integrate, uh, I mean, differentiate our tan there, that will be a sec squared. So remember, there's a derivative with respect to theta. So remember, tan, that's sec squared. So that's going to be sec squared theta times. All right, since we have a sec here, let's consider also one over cos because this, that is an identity that we hear from our ratios. So we're going to have 1 over a theta like this. Then we consider what is going to be the resultant of 1 over cos. Remember, 1 over cos is a sec. So meaning to say we also have another sec theta to be considered. So what does it mean? We can multiply the sec to the sec, right? So we're going to multiply the sec to the sec. Let's just remove this. So multiplying the sec to the sec, we're going to have 1 over a theta times the sec squared to the sec theta, we are going to consider the exponents just like the bases are the same, the sec theta, the sec theta. So you add the exponents to plus one, which is a three. So that is going to be sec cubed theta. All right. So that is our derivative, the second derivative of y with respect to x. So therefore, we're going to have our second derivative of y with respect to x. And as we can see, they are saying with respect to x, but our answer won't be in terms of x. That is the major part that you need to consider. The answer is in terms of theta, even though we are saying with respect to x, the answer will be in terms of theta. So you need to take note when you're dealing with the second 
uh, derivative of a parametric, uh, the answer will be in terms of what you are given there before, not in terms of that x for the second derivative. Uh, and also for the first derivative, it's a dy dx, but we saw that our dy dx is something that was carrying a theta, this one, dy dx. Look, this is not a theta, this is not x, the theta that we have. So the parametric, we are having answers in terms of what we are given, not in terms of what we are used. Say if this is x, we are also supposed to have our answer as x. No. So let's revise as, man, as many questions as we can. But uh, that's it, guys, for now. Till we meet again.